Okay, so last video talked about uh, cross scopes and multiple scopes. Today we're going to talk about at inject annotation. So we still have a problem here, a very simple problem, but it's a problem nonetheless. Our component is full of these sort of getter methods. The problem is if you've got 50 dependencies to inject, it's going to be quite slow to write all those out. And each time you adjust one of these, each time you say, oh, I need to change the adapter, right, do that, and then change it across the whole activity, it's going to take time. Well, uh, Java annotation, I think it's GSR 3 or 230, don't quote me on that. Basically, the standard provides this at inject annotation. So what we can do is we can tell Dagger, instead of saying, I want an adapter repos and a GitHub service, we can say, Dagger, take a look at this class and inject and any things and all the things we want will be marked with at inject. So let's take a look at how this will work. So first of all, we need to put at inject on the components on the stuff we want to populate. So these are two our inject annotations. Uh, one thing to note, Dagger cannot inject private fields. Don't do that. It'll just blow up in your compiler anyway. So this is now marking these fields saying these fields will be injected by dependency injection. So we don't need to initialize them. Brilliant. So in our component, we can get rid of these two methods and we could say void for no return type, uh, inject home activity. And then we could say home activity, home activity, okay? Now what this means is Dagger will look at the return type and say, oh, I'm this is a void return type. But it'll go, oh, the home activity is the parameter. So it'll look at home activity and say, what can I inject in home activity? It'll go, oh my god, it has inject annotations. And it will use those. So we can take our component and call inject home activity this. And then we compile that. Boom. Done. So now we've got rid of another line of uh, two lines of code. And we've got the inject annotations and the home activities injected. So if, for example, I need a Picasso here. For example, build. Done. We don't need to add a Picasso method to our component. The inject annotations will handle this for us. So that's a very cool use of inject. But there's an even better one. Actually, before I move on to the even better one, one thing to note is you can actually set the return type of this to be the same thing. So you can have a nice sort of chaining system. It doesn't work for activities, but it's a nice little touch. The problem now we have is, if we go back to our application level, actually, we'll take a look at our home activity, okay? We have to do this whole silly charade of provides. Okay? We say, well, this provides this. And we have to do this for every single dependency in our dependency tree, which can be a lot. But it also means that if adapter repos changes, its constructor changes, let's say I want to put something else in place, well, I have to go here and then I have to change this and make sure everything works. This is where things get really cool. We can add an inject annotation to the constructor and that will replace this. Now, in order for this to work in this case, we do need to uh, make home activity injectable, like so. Okay, it needs to be part of the graph at generation time. And we can just delete this all together. And then in our application, we need to just, or I think we need to say home activity context. Now when we build, it still works. So what's actually happening here is Dagger's going, okay, the home activity needs an app, it needs a adapter repos. And the adapter re and it goes to the adapter repos and goes, well, it looks through all my modules and goes, I can't find it anywhere. Let's take a look at its constructors. 
So because the at inject annotation is on the adapter repos constructor, it means that it will use this constructor to create the instance for us. So this can vastly clean up your modules if you're using if you're in control of the class. So you can use app provides for when we don't have control over the home activity creation. So we pass it into the constructor. In our network module, we don't have control over the constructor for, for cache or for file or for logging interceptor or for OK HTTP client. So we do all the initialization initialization in our modules. But we've control over the constructor for adapter repos, which means we can just slap an at inject annotation and Dagger will generate the code without the module because it knows how to use the constructor. If you think about it, Dagger doesn't know how to create an adapter repos. But we can mark it and say, this is how you create an adapter repos with an inject annotation. And it will go, hey, I can find those parameters. And it goes off and talks and goes, I don't know how to create Picasso. Oh, here's my module with Picasso. Oh, here's my thing with context. And it assembles everything for us. And that's it. Very simple. The inject annotation can save you a lot of adding to uh, modules. And it's very easy. Boom. Perfect. Done. Uh, one other type of fancy injection you can do is you can use setter injection. So, for example, I can say I can add a method in here called set GitHub service. And if I mark this with at inject and get rid of this, nope, don't get rid of that, that's stupid, and get rid of this. Uh, actually, let's look at the inject home activity method. So it creates a members injector, is what it actually generates. And in our case, there should only be one, a home activity members injector. So you can see here, it gets the instance and just literally sets the parameters for us, which is really easy. But uh, if we go back to here and we, re and we recreate this, okay? So the code's been regenerated. You'll notice our member injector becomes a little bit more complicated. You'll see here it's calling set GitHub service instead. So you can do what's called a method injection, which is what this is. Personally, if you're using method injection, don't, because it's awful. Because if you use method injection, you can end up getting a circular dependency. So that's when you have something depending on something which depends on something. And circular dependencies can be hard to resolve because they can get a bit hairy. But a good example would be, let's say you have a cache which depends on your network client and your network client depends on your cache. Well, Dagger can't resolve that. It can't figure out, well, how do I do that? Well, you can use method injection to get around it, but generally if you've got a circular dependency, you need to take a hard look at your code and your structure of your dependencies. But that's it, guys, for the inject annotation. Hope you learned a little something. It's really cool. It saves you a lot of effort and the inject constructors are great. I, I really like them because it can just save you hundreds of hours of just writing code. So that's it for this video, guys. Um, I'll probably do one or two more of these, but that'll be it for now.